Hey guys, this is Gwen on R. Smith, also known as Reggie Smith, bringing you another review to the Gunplot Network, this time of the Master Grade Gundam Astray Turn Red. The box art definitely takes a page out of the modern Master Grade boxes where it just looks so illuminating and it just has the great CGI artwork of the Turn Red and the two tactical arms. Thankfully, despite the fact that this kit was meant to be Peep and I, this is a normal release in North America, so we don't have to deal with the dreaded monochrome box of it either being red or white. We get to see the artwork up close and personal in beautiful, vibrant colors. I love the box art, and it's definitely going to pick out for anyone who might not be into Gunpla or a brand new person who just sees the box. They are going to be overwhelmed with the artwork and pick it up almost immediately, in my opinion. In terms of the build, would it be weird if I told you guys that this build is straightforward as well as being a daunting task? Now hear me out. If you've built a Master Grade Gundam Astray before, whether it be the blue frame or the red frame, you won't be lost in terms of build with structural details and how to put everything together. The problem with this kit is... There's essentially five kits that make the turn red. You have the red frame Kai, the blue frame Revise, the normal red frame, you have the Sengoku Astray, and all of the brand new original pieces that make the turn red. So essentially you have five kits to make one. And a lot of the runners use almost the exact same parts. There will be multiple duplicates of frame parts for the legs and you'll be wondering which one do I use? Did I use the wrong one? You will be very lost if you don't have the instruction manual with there's so many runners in this kit. If you can have the patience and work through it with the instructions, you will be able to manage the build. But again, five kits to make one with so many leftover runner parts and duplicates of the same frames and the same parts, it could be difficult. So, because of that, I'm going to give the building process of the turn red a 6.5 out of 10. Once you go through the daunting task of building it, you have the overall look of the turn red. And it looks almost exactly as the box art and lineup from the manga has it portrayed. I like the red frame. Essentially, it is a red frame in inverted color. So the frame is white instead of red, and the armor is red instead of white. The black stays the same, and all of the clear green pieces stay the same. It looks really good. However, you might be slightly disappointed to know that this kit is a little sticker heavy. Not brutally, but some white pieces where I felt could have been color separated. Ben and I decided to use stickers, especially for the V-fins, part of the legs. I decided to not go through that task because it just looks bad. I wish Bandai would have used more color separation, but since this was intentionally, this was done intentionally to be originally a P Bandai, I see where they go with that, where they will just try to use stickers to cover up imperfections. Otherwise, this looks really good and it's gonna be striking even in terms of astray wise, I will give the look of the turn red a seven and a half out of 10. The articulation of the turn red is good. Once you get rid of the backpacks. Yeah, I'm sorry. If you think you're gonna get any real cool posing with the both tactical arms on the back, no way in hell, I'm sorry. You, you have to be able to pose that thing without the tactical arms attached. Once you get it off the back, it has all of the great maneuverability and posing that any of the red frames or the blue frames have within themselves. Great leg articulation, great arm articulation. The waist works well, except when you're trying to pull out of the cockpit. That could be a little bit challenging, but once you get the backpacks off, this thing could do pretty much anything that you want it to do. But due to the fact that you have to deal with the technical arms in terms of posing, it gets a little bit limiting, I'm not gonna lie. This kit might give a brand new definition to the word back heavy. I will give the articulation of the turn red a seven and a half out of 10. The accessories I feel are at the strongest point of this kit. And there are a lot of reasons why. Now, obviously the big bad elephant in the room are the tactical arms. They look great, but I highly suggest that you panel line as well as use some of the water slides to break up some of that 
enormous amounts of white in the middle parts of it. They work pretty well, just like the other tactical arms, you come with a display stand to set it up in any other way, whether you want to use it as swords, claw arms, the Gatling gun modifications, they work wonders and you want to really want to use this display stand that it comes with it. Beyond that, you get two daggers that it gets from the Blue Frame Revised that go on the sides of the legs. You get all of the original parts to make the standard Gundam Astray Red Frame, as in you get the shield and you get the gun. Now it was asked during the unboxing, can you make the original Red Frame? And the answer for the most part is yes. Not only you get the exact same runner that came with the standard P Bandai Astray Red Frame, you get the beam rifle, you get the shield, and all the pieces to make the backpack. The only parts that you don't get is the original Astray V-Fin, and you also don't get the beam effect parts for the beam sabers, but if you want to attach that backpack to the, if you have a red frame laying around, you can do it. The only slight problem is the frame and the backpack is white instead of red. If you don't mind it, or if you can paint it to a red, you essentially not only have an original kit in here, but you could turn your red frame, Kai, into the normal red frame. So essentially, you're getting all the bonus parts. I will give the accessories to this kit a nine and a half out of 10, just for that alone. So people can avoid the P Bandai route of getting the standard red frame, nine out of 10. So where does the fun factor come with the turn red? I really feel the fact of the fun factor is just how it looks really this thing is just bright red and pale white this thing is gonna just stand out on its own especially with the tactical arms in its back this thing has shelf presence just screaming all over itself and it really looks good posing if you can work with the display stand you can get have a lot of fun posing attacking other gundams or other model kits with the tactical arms it really depends on having a lot of patience and how you want to have fun with the turn red. But if you have the patience, you have the imagination, and even if you don't and you just want to just have it stand and look badass, you can do that. I will give the fun factor of the turn red an 8.5 out of 10. My final thoughts on the turn red is that as awesome and as cool as this Gundam looks on paper, I feel it failed a bit in terms of concept and execution of that concept. Now, an astray in inverted colors with two tactical arms, don't get me wrong, looks so awesome. Especially with the CJ art and even the art from the manga. This look, thing looks cool. But it just doesn't work very well in the real life sense of it backpacks when you attach the tactical arms to the turn red it really limits what you can do with it you want to get a lot of those cool poses from the box it can be very challenging i'm not gonna lie to you guys it can be hard it can be challenging and even when you can do it it just doesn't execute as well as you would think in your head so i just feel that essentially it works as a very niche thing if you have been paying attention to Gundam Sea Destiny Astray R and you want this thing, or if you just really want another Astray kit. Hell, if you just even want the normal red frame and you just want to hack the pieces out of that kit and put it onto your normal Astray, you got it. But I just feel that this kit isn't practical and it's weird to say that you know saying a giant robot from an anime doesn't work in real life this is definitely one of the rare cases where to me what is cool on paper and what's cool as art just doesn't work in the real world having two tactical arms even having one tactical arms is a bit of a challenge when it comes to the red frame kai but two you add two of them it just it just falls apart well, this when you're trying to look at it between when you're trying to look at it in between the red frame, the blue frame, and the turn red, it matches up very well. I will say I like the red frame Kai a little bit more in terms of overall score and what it can do. In terms of building, I like the blue frame, the second blue frame, 
the blue frame d i think in terms of building it was able to fix it was able to fix a lot of the flaws of the original master grade red frames and blue frames and it had just a better build this thing i would say outside of the accessories it's a master of all the trades how can i say this it's a jack of all trades but it's not a master of one there's nothing other than its look that it really just does well but it's cool it's a niche thing if you got the cash to do it go buy this kit i gotta thank again canadian gundam for giving this to me to be able to review for you guys please if you have the time if you have the money go check out canadian gundam and buy a couple of kits for yourself with a ten dollar flat shipping rate and you can even get this kit for yourself if you're interested and i just hope that i was able to help you guys out with what you want to do with this kit this is 101R Smith, and I will see you later.